Now that we've set up our database and table, it would be a good time to take a look at setting up users and user privileges. Earlier, we discussed the root user. We know that the root user is assigned all privileges and has complete control over database administration. What if we wanted to allow certain users to only be able to perform certain tasks? Well, we can do that by creating a new user and limiting the privileges of the user. Before we get started, make sure you're on the home screen by clicking the home button. Now click on the users button in the main menu. Next, click add user. Under the heading login information, type in a new username for the user. Now specify which host name the user will connect from. For example, if you want the user to be able to connect from any IP address or host name, you can select the Any Host option. If you wanted to limit the host name to a specific computer on your local network, you can select the Use Text Field option and type in the computer's IP or host name. For the purpose of this exercise, use the Any Host option. We'll delete this user after we're done because we'll be connecting to our database as a root user. Now type in a password for this user. For a more secure password, you can click the Generate Password button. But remember to save the password in a secure file because it's fairly long and hard to remember. Before we move on to the next set of options here, it's important to note that when it comes to user privileges, there are three types of privilege categories. This includes global privileges, database specific privileges, and table specific privileges. If you assign a user global privileges, is seen here under this heading, these privileges will be applicable to all databases on the MySQL server. This is generally not a good practice. It's much better to assign non-root users database-specific and table-specific privileges. As the name suggests, database and table-specific privileges apply only to a specific database or table. We can assign these privileges after we complete this section. For now, under the heading Database for User, leave both boxes unchecked because we don't want to create a new database for this user, nor do we want to grant privileges on a wildcard name. We also don't want to give this user any global privileges, so we'll leave these checkboxes empty as well. In case you do want to create global privileges at some point in the future, we can do a brief overview of the options. The first section here, under the heading Data, is to assign data privileges only. This means the user can select, insert, update, delete, or file data, depending on which items we check off. With data privileges, the user cannot do things like delete the entire database, or modify its structure or indexes. We can assign structure privileges in this section here. If you want the user to be able to create, alter, or drop the database, among other things, you can specify them by placing a check mark in the appropriate check boxes. For example, if you'd like the user to be able to drop a database, put a check mark in the drop checkbox. The administration section allows you to define whether the user can do things like create new users or grant privileges. 
We can also set resource limits on the user so they are not too resource intensive on the system in this section here. As you can see, there's many options. For more information about each option, you can find them in the PHP MyAdmin documentation available at the link below. Since we're not setting any global privileges, click the Go button to save the new user. Now we can see the new user has been added to our list.